Hello everyone, I'm Ingo from All Quant. A great welcome to our channel. And this is the second video in this series where I talk about the tool Ninja Trader. Now, in our previous video, we talked about where you can download Ninja Trader and then we cover some of its basic functionality such as charting and adding technical indicators onto the chart. Now, if you have not watched the previous video, you can easily find it in our channel. All right. And as for today's video, we will be exploring the backtesting capabilities in Ninja Trader. Ready? Let's dive in. Let's go over what we'll be covering today. First, we'll be looking at a strategy that we want to create, and it is a very basic moving average crossover strategy that I'm using just to illustrate backtesting capabilities in Ninja Trader. So take note here, this is not some holy grail magic formula that is going to make you tons of money. All right, so don't just anyhow use it to trade. Okay, then we will see how we can create right this moving average crossover strategy in Ninja Trader without writing a single line of code. And this can be done if a strategy isn't too complex. Then after that, we will run the strategy that we've created and look at its performance. And finally, we will see how we can make use of Ninja Trader's optimizer to optimize the strategy to find out what is the best set of parameters that we can use. To define a strategy, we need just three things. First is the concept, second is the parameters that we're going to use, and the third is the rules governing how the strategy is being run. Now the concept behind the crossover strategy essentially boils down to identifying the trends within the security that you want to trade. And in our example here, we'll be applying the strategy on SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF. And to do that, it makes use of two moving averages. So there is a fast moving average and a slow moving average. So the fast moving average right, is calculated over a shorter duration, which makes it more sensitive to price movements. And a slow moving average, on the other hand, spans a longer duration and is less sensitive to price movements. So the parameters that we can play around with in the strategy is just the duration or the window period, which is used to calculate these two averages. And it's represented over here by the fast MA period and the slow MA period. And as for the rules, there are only two simple rules here. The first one is that when a fast moving average crosses above the slow moving average, that establishes an uptrend and we will go long, right? That means we establish a long position. Then the second rule is that when a fast moving average crosses below the slow moving average, that means a downtrend. And then we will take on a short position. So if you look at it, the strategy is always in a position. It is either in the long position or in the short position. Let's see how everything works on the chart and it'll be clear. So what we have here is the price chart of SPY, which is represented by the black line. Then we have the green line, which is your fast moving average and the more stable orange line, which is your slow moving average. Now, if you look at this point over here, this is where your fast moving average cuts below the slow moving average. Okay, which means you a short signal is being triggered. And that means that you're going to liquidate whatever long position you have and then subsequently put on a short position. And this strategy then basically carries the short position all the way, riding the trend down until this particular point here, where the fast moving average cuts above the slow moving average again. All right. That means you got to close out your existing short position and then put on a long position from this point onwards. Now let's look at how we can create this strategy within Ninja Trader. So the first thing you need to do is to come to the tools option at the top menu, click on it, and then come down to new Ninja script and select strategy, right? A new window is going to pop up. Then after that, you just need to click on the next button. It will ask you for the name of the strategy. So I would just call it SMA crossover. Okay. The name has to be one single word with no space. Right, and then you can enter the description of the strategy here. I'm just going to say uh, a simple moving average crossover strategy. Right, all right, then just select this as calculate on bar close and click on the next button. Right, and over to this new window here, it is asking you to define the parameters that you need to put into the strategy. And if you recall, we're going to need two parameters. Right, one is for the period you use to calculate a fast moving average and the other is for the period you use to calculate a slow moving average. All right, I'm going to put in the first one, fast MA period. Okay, that will be a default value. I'm going to set the fast MA period as 50, meaning a 50 day moving average period. Okay, and then description, I'm going to give it a fast moving 
average window period, right? Then after that, the next parameter, your slow MA period, okay? And I'm for the slow moving average, I'm gonna use a period of 200 days, right? To calculate the moving average. And that will be the slow moving average window period. You can also define the data type of the parameters over here. So Ninja Trader allows Boolean, double, integer, or string. But since both parameters that we have here are talking about the number of days, what you need is integer values. All right, so once we're done with that, we can click on to the next button. Oops, you got an error here. All right, invalid input parameter name must consist of letter. First character must be uppercase. All right, so I think what I have here is lowercase for the first letter, so I'm gonna correct it. So capital F for fast and capital S for slow. All right, then we click next. In this next step, we're gonna create a rules for the strategies. And to do that, we click on the add button. And this first rule that we're gonna create will be when the fast moving average crosses above the slow moving average, we put on a long position. All right, so to do that, we come over to the indicators part, expand on it, and then we look for SMA or your simple moving average, right? Which is down here. Double click on it, and it will open the parameters below. Select on period, Okay, click over here, and then we want to choose user defined inputs. We define the two parameters that we can change right earlier on, and they will be inside here. So the first one we want to put in is the fast MA period. Click on OK, right? And then the condition we want it to be is for it to cross us above the slow moving average. So over here, we will choose cross above, all right? And then on the right hand side, we're going to choose under indicators, again, SMA, okay, simple moving average. And then we go to the period, click on it and select here. But this time around, we will choose the slow MA period and click on OK. So the rule will be read like this, right? When a fast MA period crosses above the slow MA period, okay, this is the rule or this is the condition that it has to be met. Then click on OK. So when this condition is true, what are we gonna do? We're gonna put on a long position. So we would under this do the following, we will add in what we need to do. And the thing we need to do is under order management, enter a long position, all right? And click okay on that. And we're done with the first rule. Now we're ready to add in the second rule. And to add in the second rule, come to this set two over here, right? Then click on the add button and we just repeat the same process. So we look for SMA as the indicator, okay, SMA, then click on period, and then we select your fast MA, okay. Then this time around, the condition is for it to cross below, right, cross below the slow moving average. So cross below, then on the right hand side again, we look for your SMA, right, and the period is slow MA period. Okay, so now the condition is when the fast MA period crosses below the slow MA period. So this will be the condition we want to evaluate. Right, click on OK. And when this condition is true, we will do the following. Right, so click on the Add button here. And then we enter this time a short position. Click on OK. We now have both the rules defined. Then what we need to do is just to click on next. And the next step is for you to define any stop loss or profit target rules that you might have. But for this example, we're not gonna have any. So just click on next again and then finished. And basically we're done with creating the strategy itself. Now that we've created the strategy, we can now go and test and see how it performs, right? And to do that, you can go to the file option at the top menu, click on it and select new and come down to strategic analyzer and this will this will open up a new window right which on the left hand panel contains the security list in ninja trader right now so i'm going to open or expand up my list and i'm going to select on spy right click on it and select the option back test okay this will open up a panel on the right hand side and at the top of this panel you'll see the, a number of strategies that you can actually select so I got a lot more here because I've created quite a fair bit of strategies myself. But the one that I am going to look at is SMA crossover, right? I'm going to click on it. And once you click on it, right, the parameters that you can tweak within the strategies will be at the bottom here. Okay, that includes your fast MA period and your slow MA period. And currently it's now set at a default of 50 and 200. So you can change this number, but I'm not, but I'm not going to change them. I'm just going to go with the default, right? 
And the next one is the data series. You need to come down here and change the type to day. Why? Because this is the resolution of the data that we are working with. Okay. And as for the time frame, this specifies the period that you want to apply this back test on. And I'm going to cover the longer period. So I'm going to make it start from the year 2000. All right. That's it. All right. So for the rest, you can just stay put as it is. And then once we're ready, we can click on the button below, run back test. Once the back test is done, it's going to bring you to a summary page that looks something like this. And it actually breaks down the performance into three parts. The combined trades, that means all the trades. And it also breaks it down into the long trades and the short trades. So you get information like how your strategy did all right, in terms of cumulative profit, how much it loses in terms of maximum drawdown. You're going to see the total number of trades made and how many of them are actually profitable and how many of them are actually losing trades. Okay, you also get a sense of on average how much you make per trade and what is the largest winning trade as well as the losing trades as well as the average holding time right per trade in the market itself. Okay, so these are fairly useful information that you can actually draw upon right in the summary table itself. For example, at a glance, we know that this strategy is on the whole profitable and all the profits are actually driven out from the long trades. Right, the short trades actually is a drag. It actually loses money in the long run. Besides this performance summary, you can also check out some other stuff. For example, at the top here, you can click on the chart, and this is going to show you right in the chart format where all the trades are, where all the trades are being done, and whether it is a winning trade or whether it's a losing trade. So winning trades are represented by this green line, and losing trades are represented by all these red lines over here. All right, then you can also click on the graph at the top and this gives you a graphical representation of the cumulative profit made over time. And over on the execution tabs, it shows you where all the buy and sell trades are being done. If you click on trades at the top here, you'll be able to see a breakdown of all the trades being done and it will give you trade level information. For example, the first trade that the strategy made was a short trade. Right? And you know where the entry price is and where it exits, right? As well as the time it enters and the time it exits. And it will tell you after the position is closed out, it made a loss of 2.75%. All right, and you have trade level information for all the trades that has been done. Now, if you move over to the periods tab, this simply breaks down your performance either by the day, okay, by the year or by the week right so you can actually select uh, the various different options here but one thing to take note here is the ninja trader only registers a profit and loss when the trade is closed so in between when you are holding on to a trade it doesn't calculate your unrealized profit and loss all right so you got to take note of this particular point out here now the back test we did is on the default parameter setting of 50 days for your fast ma and 200 days for your slow ma but what if you want to find out what is the best possible combination between these two parameters that can give you the optimal performance? Of course, one way we can go about doing it is to manually change the parameters and try it out one by one, but that would be too cumbersome. So Ninja Trader provides you a function, right, or an optimizer functions to help you with this task itself. To bring out the optimizer, right click on spy, then select optimized, and this will open a panel on the right hand side. So over here, you see your fast MA period and your slow MA period. So let me expand on the fast MA period. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the minimum value that I want Ninja Trader to set to try out, right? For the fast MA period to be, let's say, uh, 10 days. Okay. And the maximum value, I'm going to try it out all the way to, say, 150 days, right? 150 days. And I'm going to ask Ninja Trader to step through the various scenarios in step size of five days. Right, so it's going to try out of 10, then 15, then 20, all the way until 150. Okay, this is for the fast MA period. So I'm also going to specify for the slow MA period, and I'm going to basically test it from 150 days onwards for the slow MA period, all the way to 250 days for the slow MA. And I'm also, also going to increment it by five days each time. Right, so Ninja Trader will try out through all the various possible combinations down here. Okay, so over here, uh, let's look at the data series. It is daily data, so that's correct. And the time frame I'm looking at is from the 1st of January 2000 to today. Okay, let's leave the rest untouched. And over here in optimize, right? So it will tell Ninja Trader to keep the best 10 results that they actually evaluated. 
all right or you can actually change it to the best 20 or best 25 whatever whatever you want to keep it down there right but i'm just going to keep the 10 best results okay optimize data series just keep it as it is false and then the third one right optimize on okay so this basically is telling ninja trader what kind of opti what kind of objective you want it to achieve right in this optimization exercise do you want to maximize the profit factor do you want to maximize the average profit okay do you want to maximize the win loss ratio the sharp ratio whichever it is so for my case i want to maximize the net profit right the overall net profit so i'm going to choose maximum net profit and optimizer there's two types there's a default and a genetic i'm going to select default which is which basically means that ninja trader would try out every possible single scenario specified here right within the parameters that we just defined all right and then right after all this is done you can just click on the button run optimization and then leave it to run right until it finishes its task all right the optimization is done so let's click on the optimizer tab at the top okay and this part here will shows you the top 10 results right that ninja trader got out of this exercise right and you can come to the cumulative profit column to do a sort such that the largest set at the top okay and in this case the largest cumulative profit i got out of this exercise is 311.63 percent and the parameter used to achieve this result is 60 day fast ma period and 250 days for a slow ma period and if you want a more detailed breakdown on the performance of this particular strategy here you can go to the bottom and again look at the summary tab right which essentially shows you the same thing i've covered earlier right so you can click on the summary followed by the chart graphs execution and look at the trade detail information as well okay i've come to the end of this video i hope you find it useful and as usual do us a favor click on the like and subscribe button below all right, and if you're interested in what we do and offer the old Kwan, do pop by our website to have a look. The link is in the YouTube description below. All right, so that's it for now. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.